and 20 to order and I'd like to like welcome everybody it I I'm getting a sense that there's like about 20 people at this point online and it's going to be quite amazing I believe um, anyway I'm going to start so first off we're going to acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional land of the Saugeen Ojibwe nation which is represented by the communities of Saugeen First Nation and Chippewa Maywash Unceded First Nation. We also think of the Métis Nation of Ontario, whose history and people are well represented in Bruce and Gray counties. Just to let you know, we have received no regrets from anybody, so from any of the trustees, so everybody will be here tonight. I'm going to now put the approval on the agenda on the floor and I'll be looking for a first and second mover. So here it goes that the agenda for the special regular meeting of the board for. Wait a minute. I have a special meeting of the board and that's not true. OK, so first off, I don't know how that happened and I now became smaller. Ah, oh, I see what uh, happened here. So um, I have not received any regrets and now I'm going to do my moment of reflection. So this is our first online regular meeting of the board. I would like to begin by acknowledging, of course, our staff who have been heroic in their efforts over the past several weeks for the two uh, weeks to support the students and families of the Blue Water District School Board. We and everyone are dealing with unprecedented challenges 19 pandemic St uh, and the staff are working in collaborating ways in which we've never seen. Whether you are an educator, an administrator, custodian, support staff member, or occupy any other role in our system, adapt to new methods of program delivery conducted board business. Our students, parents and guardians have also shown amazing spirit on, and resilience in the sudden switch to a distant learning model. Despite some of the challenges, especially for the rural board such as ours, it is encouraging to see so many recent examples on social media of our students, students learning and engaging from home. At the same time, we remain extremely mindful of how difficult and financially, this situation has been to families. We are thinking of them at this time. For a moment of reflection, please join me as we share our thanks and some positive thoughts for the continued safety, well being, and success of our students, staff, and families and the schools who being closed due to COVID 19. Chair John Stone, yeah. Let me just turn your volume down a little bit. Okay. So you're getting. Okay. I haven't actually touched anything. Just to yeah, let you know. I just know. think it's get. I just think you're getting some feedback. So, um, I think if you just turn your volume down a little bit on your computer, That's then it I'm might not uh, create the feedback. Okay, I've done that. Okay, so how am I now? Can you hear me it's now? It's good, yeah, it's good now. Okay, okay. So we're now taking a moment of silence, of silent reflection. Okay, thank you. So now I'm going to put the approval of the agenda on the floor and looking for a first and second mover. That the agenda for the regular meeting of the board for April 21st, 2020 be approved as printed. Um, I can I have in the chat, can you put moved? So I have uh, Trustee Thompson and Trustee Mancombe as a seconder. All in favor and you can either put yay and you can put yay in the chat or in favor or whatever you want. OK, 
Okay. I think, and it's also going to probably take some time. So I think I'm seeing one, two, three. Okay. It's, is there any um, that do not approve of the agenda? I see none, so um, the, the agenda is now approved as printed. Are there any disclosure of pecuniary interests um, to do with any of the items before you this evening? I'm not um, seeing or hearing anybody say there's any disclosure, so there's no disclosure. So next I'm at A4A on your agenda, and I'm going to be putting the motion on the floor um, that uh, the, for the approval of the regular meetings of the board minutes for February 2020, so that the minutes of the regular meeting of the board of February 18, 2020 be approved as printed. Can I have a mover, please, and a seconder? So I have Jim Daw Trustee Dawson and Trustee McComb. Thank you very much. Is there any errors or omissions um, that you have noticed in the minutes? I'm, I'm actually hearing some back of like some some speaking, but I'm not sure if that is someone speaking to concerns um, within um, within the the uh, minutes of this meeting. Um, so what you can do just to, just to make sure that I haven't missed anything is if you're actually going to speak or say something is just put I'm speaking or I would like to speak uh, in the chat so I I know that I'm. I'm going to listen because if you're on mute and unmuting, it may take some time. So anyway, I don't see any concerns. So all in, uh, all in favor. And welcome, Jennifer. Okay, and opposed. Okay, I see none in it. It it is carried. Next, I'm I'm looking for the approval that the minutes of the committee of the whole board meeting of March third, two thousand and twenty, be approved as printed. I'm looking for a first and a second, and maybe not the same people. So I have a trustee Lutz. Okay, great. And uh, uh, tr uh, Trustee uh, Atkinson. Okay, with those minutes, is there any errors or uh, um, omissions that you've noticed within those minutes? Okay, I'm seeing none. All in favor? Okay, so, okay, and that's approved. So I just want to make sure that I haven't kind of missed anything. So I realize that I believe there was um, a, actually a third set, and I don't believe that I did the first one. Sorry about that. So I'm looking for approval of the regular meeting of the board minutes of February 18th, 2020. Um, no, no, I did that one. I did that one. So sorry. I'm <laughs> Had pages here. Confusing. Okay. I did the third. Bev, which ones have I missed? 
I believe that I've missed. I OK, so you're saying the approval of a special meeting of the board. OK, right. OK, sorry about that. Um, OK, so next I'm looking for approval of the special meeting of the board minutes for March 3rd, 2020, and I'm going to put it on the floor that the minutes of the special regular meeting of the board of March 3rd, 2020 be approved as printed. Uh, can I have a I had trustee Thompson as a mover and uh, can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Trustee McComb. Um, is there any errors or omissions um, that you've noticed in those min minutes? No. Um, Trustee Morgan, I noticed that you said yes. So would you like to speak if you noticed an error or omission in that particular minutes? I was trying to second. Oh, okay. The motion. OK, excellent. OK, super. So it doesn't appear that there is any errors or omissions. So all in favor? It looks like um, it, the motion has now passed or is there anybody against approving those minutes? OK, I see none and it's approved and passed. Um, next, is there any business arising from any of the minutes that um, were from these me meetings that you'd like to bring before us this evening? Okay, I see none. So now we're going to move on to report. So first off, the committee of the whole board report. There is no um, committee of the whole board report. And we're going to move to um, section B2 and its upcoming board meetings. So this is a discussion um, with the trustees. So at this time, we suggest moving forward with the committee of the whole meetings only as necessary. And that's usually when we have it on the <coughs> Tuesday of the month on the and of course it would always be on the days previously scheduled. We will continue with regular meetings of the board on the dates previous scheduled with nece necessary agenda items. We will of course not be entertaining delegations during this time. So this is a discussion part for the trustees. Does the regular meeting, the time for the meeting work for everyone? So that's 7 p.m. Or would you prefer an earlier start time? For example, 4 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. So I'm going to be looking along my chat to see if um, different trustees would like to speak to that. OK, uh, Trustee Boyd, John, would you just like to speak um, so that we can hear you? Um, either time is OK for me at the moment. OK, OK, so you're you're flexible and yeah. uh, trust Thompson. I also am very flexible on this. I probably would prefer the 4 p.m. start, um, but I'm very flexible if it works better at 7. Can you repeat that, Trusty Thompson, because I missed it? I was saying either either time works for me, I, but I probably would prefer the 4 p.m. and leave the evening open, but I have no big preference. So if, if this time's better for people who are working or have other obligations, 
I, I'm I'm good either way. Okay, thank you. And uh, Trustee Lutz. Like Trustee Thompson, 4 p.m. is slightly better for me, but e either works and it's only slightly better. So whatever works for everyone else is great. Okay. And Trustee Dawson. Yeah, either works for me. Four o'clock would be okay. Um, I find seven is better for me because it's after supper, not before, but I'm flexible. Okay. And Trustee Atkinson? Seven would be would would be better for me. Oh, okay. Thank you. And Trustee McCobb. Yes, either yeah, is either okay. Is okay. <laughs> oh, that was great, Trustee McComb. Thank you. And um, if we have not heard from anybody else, it would be great. So, um, uh, Trustee Miller. Either one is okay for me, too. Okay. And uh, Trustee Morgan, I haven't heard from you. I'm completely flexible. Excellent. Either uh, time is perfect. Okay. It, we have, uh, so I, we can have more of a conversation. I heard um, that for most of the trustees, they were all flexible. It, was, it wasn't relevant whether it was four o'clock or seven o'clock. We heard from a couple of trustees that said that, you know, 4 p.m. was slightly better than 7 p.m., but they were flexible. And then we heard from one trustee that said that definitely 7 p.m. worked for them. So with that in mind, and because we normally meet at seven, I want to know if everybody would be okay with at this time, we can revisit this anytime, is that we can continue with then 7 p.m. Okay. I'm seeing lots of comments running down the side saying yes, let's, you know, stay together. It sounds good. Yes. Okay. It, it looks like that as a board of trustees that we have decided to um, stick with the, you know, stay with the 7 p.m. And of course, you know, down the road, this I might all change or we might all meet in person and that would be very strange. Okay. <laughs> So with that, with that is ended that discussion. And now I'm going to move to B3. Oh, okay, wait a minute. I don't believe I need a motion because we're just meeting at 7 p.m., which is our regular meeting of the board time. So we're now going to move to B3. Um, I'm not aware at, at this time, but does anybody have a notice of motion they'd like to bring forward? I'm not seeing anything in my side chat about a notice of motion. So next we're going to move to B4. And that's committee established and appointments. And just to let you know, there are no new committees established or appointments at this time. So we're now into the C section of our agenda. And it's a student senate report. And I'd like to invite, um, invite um, a student senator Becker to give their student senate report and welcome uh, student Becker. OK, um, thank you. Can you guys hear me OK? Yes. OK, um, so good evening, everyone. And I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy at home with their families. Um, all of our students are invested in the world of online learning and are trying to take our classes as normally as possible. Um, since there's not much going on at school, this report is going to be focused mainly on our Senate work. So currently we're working on initiatives such as the multi-year strategic plan, a sustainable initiative document, 
and a board-wide survey. Our sustainable initiatives document is a guide for the next year's Senate to help them plan and attack initiatives with information from this year's accomplishments. And our board wide survey will be is to investigate students interests and passions to see if they feel happy with how things are. If they need changes that we are unaware of. Um, in these times, students are confused and have very many questions. Um, so we're reaching out to students and answering their questions through our student Senate Instagram account. So for those unfamiliar with Instagram, it's just another social media platform such as Facebook or Twitter. And we've been trying to update students on what's happening currently by posting a lot and keeping them informed. And as well, Lucas and I have been mes messaging them and answering all of their questions to the best of our abilities. Um, this week, we have our orientation meeting where all the senators for next term will be introduced to the board atmosphere as much as possible through an online meeting such as this one. Um, we have all new senators for next term, which will be exciting. And the senators will also be voting for two new student trustees. And overall, the Senate has been calling at least once a week or once every other week, keeping up with initiatives and trying to complete them. And we're all really eager to return to school and the board office, however, making do with the circumstances and we're keeping a positive attitude. Thank you. And I can take any questions. Okay, um, trustees, do you have any questions for student Senator Becker? Sorry. Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, it looks like uh, Trustee Thompson has a comment. Go ahead, Trustee Thompson. I was worried that I wasn't going to get that in in time. I, uh, I typed it incorrectly the first time, so I had to backtrack. You did a nice job. This is a strange platform to work in to do a meeting, and I really appreciate the comments that you made, and I hope you will be very vocal in letting us know what students are feeling and thinking as we go through this very unusual time. Thank you very much for the work that you're doing. And Trustee Lutz. Yes, great job and thank you, student trustee Backer. I was just wondering if you could share with us a bit of student perspective on how online learning is going. Thank you. Um, so in my opinion, I really like online learning because it's really organized and all of your work is just in one like area and platform. Um, many other students have different perspectives, obviously. Um, those without proper internet or proper supplies would definitely be struggling more than someone who had faster internet and more available supplies. But I feel like for the classrooms that I'm in, everyone's successfully applying themselves and it's working fairly well. Excellent. Is there any other questions or comments uh, for student trustee Becker? Um, I, I do have a, a, a question um, uh, and that has to do with it. You mentioned that um, on Instagram that you're hearing from various students and responding to their questions or questions and concerns. Can you give me give us any examples of what kinds of questions you may be asked and um, and if you can answer them, where do you try to get the information or send them? So a lot of questions are just they're very straightforward. So a lot of them are, oh, when are we going back to school? Are we going back to school? Is prom canceled? Very straightforward questions. Usually uh, we run them by uh, Cynthia Lemon mm -hmm. and she usually gives us an answer and then we just say the same thing back to them. We usually can't say too, too much because they're like unanswerable questions, but we try our best. Oh, that's excellent. And, and thank you. And thank you for, for sharing that. I, I, um, I, I just wondered if different students were maybe meeting in different ways. Like, are, are you hearing about that? Um, I think it's just usually through video calls for okay. now through platforms like this one and Zoom. OK, and I also have a question from Trustee uh, Miller. Go ahead. Um, 
yeah, Lucas had just mes messaged me and he said that the survey will definitely have a section on e-learning and we'll get information about that. Ah, okay, so you're answering from the chat. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Trustee Miller, do you have, okay, so now I hear, I uh, see Director Murray, she also has a comment. Go Thank ahead, Trustee Murray. Thank you, Chair Johnstone. We actually have a survey um, uh, ready to go. We have distributed it to staff at this point, and um, we will be, uh, and parents, I believe, and we will be distributing to students. It is a new uh, format called Thought Exchange, which allows uh, students then to rate other the comments of other students, and it narrows it, the comments and the ideas down into some key themes. So that's ready to go, and we're, um, I, I believe uh, Superintendent Lemon is uh, going to be speaking to the Senate about how to get that uh, distributed out to our students. Thank you. I believe we had uh, discussed with uh, Superintendent Lemon about that survey. Excellent, and I noticed that uh, Trustee Luce said that she participated in that survey or survey as a parent, and she really likes the platform. And uh, Superintendent Lemon it says that is correct, and they are on it. It's really strange for me. I'm just going to like disclose to you as trying to chair this online meeting and kind of seeing what's going on here, and then I have paper copies to try to keep me on task, and then I see this meeting chat. And I just feel like I should, you know, also really trying to get people to speak as opposed to just on a chat. So we get used to talking to one another because at some point we're going to come out of the pandemic times and we might actually want to talk to one another. <laughs> okay. Thank you very, very much. It was, uh, it was really great to see you and of course here, Lucas. Um, it's um, it's you know, there's a part about this that seems very disconnected during these times. And so it was um, great for for um, for all the the course, the the student uh, two student trustees and of course the Senate to participate in our in our board online meeting. And so thank you very much. And great report. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. OK, next we're going to move to staff reports. And it has to do with um, a continu continuity of, of plan. And so I would like to invite Superintendent Hamilton to present the report. So first of all, I'm going to put the motion on the floor and then um, uh, Superintendent Hamilton will speak. So first of all, that the Blue Water District School Board received the continuity of learning plan report for information. Can I have a first and a second for that, please? So Trustee Dawson and uh, Trustee Atkinson and welcome Superintendent Hamilton. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Um, I have a PowerPoint which I'm going to bring up. Awesome. <laughs> Can you see that okay? Yes. Yeah. Are you seeing all of the PowerPoints or just the main slide? I see the main slide and then uh, along the side, I see the other the other ones that are, will eventually come up. I'm going to try to fix that here, just a second. OK. And then I see pictures of your grandchildren. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding. There kidding. we go. <laughs> Is that better? It's excellent. Right. So. Um, on as it states in on in your report on Tuesday, um, March 31st. Uh, the Ministry of Education announced that the closure of schools would be extended for students until May 4th. And of course, it's subsequently been extended beyond that. Uh, as part of uh, that announcement, um, students moved from kind of that phase one where they were, uh, you know, the first week after, first little while after March break, where they were able to access some online learning um, through uh, TVO and Ministry of Education resources. With phase two, uh, we were looking at uh, reaching out to the students and beginning to initiate um, direct contact and, su and, and uh, supporting them with their learning at home. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of go through and talk a little bit ab about the planning and the work that we've done. 
I'm going to invite uh, Superintendent Lemon and uh, Callahan to uh, chime in as we go along because some of this uh, relates directly to the work that they've done. One of the initial things that we needed to do is we had uh, a number of uh, staff who um, would have left at March break and, you know, in, in, intending that they would be coming back um, after the, uh, the brief closure period. And so they didn't necessarily have the resources that they needed to be able to support learning at home. And so we had to create an opportunity for those staff to come into the school and uh, pick up their computers and the resources and uh, so they could have them with them. With the closure of the school, we couldn't just kind of, um, you know, say, come on in. Uh, we had to get that cleared through the uh, through public health. And so we put together a protocol uh, in terms of what our access would look like and uh, shared that with public health and it was approved. So with that, uh, the staff were set up on a schedule. Uh, they had 15 minutes to come into the school and then pick up their resources and then they had to head out and we had uh, protocols in place for cleaning uh, any of the areas that staff had been just so that we wouldn't be contributing uh, at all to the spread of, of uh, COVID-19. So um, we just we had uh, teachers, administrators, early childhood educators uh, coming in and picking up the uh, technology devices that they needed from the workplace. Um, we also had some teachers uh, additional teachers who would not have been assigned a computer because of they, they wouldn't have uh, sufficient FTE you know, with our um, technology master plan. Uh, teachers have to be teaching a certain amount before we provide them with a board computer. So subsequently, we created an opportunity for some of those teachers who would also be supporting the learning in the classroom uh, to come in and pick up their computers. And we also created the plan for families that did not have access to technology to come in and get a computer. I, wanted, I know one of the key messages from uh, the trustees and from the director has been that we want to ensure that we're giving equitable, opp equitable opportunity for our students uh, to learn. And we wanted to make sure that we were giving um, just clear consideration to uh, students and staff and mental health. So those have both been really primary in our thinking as we've done our planning. Uh, so we created the second protocol uh, for families and teachers uh, to come in. We had a, an online uh, board survey where parents could go in and um, request a technology. And in addition, um, as Wendy's going to talk about in a minute, um, we had teachers contacting families. And so if families weren't able to access the survey, the teachers collected that information and shared it with the principals. So ultimately principals ended up with a list of parents who didn't have a device or didn't have internet or didn't have both. And then um, we, uh, principals took that list and they um, created, uh, they called all the parents, set up an appointment, um, we met the parents out front of the school, provided them with the computer and, um, and then uh, some instructions and they signed an agreement for the computer and then they sent, were sent on their way. And uh, so that's how we provided uh, computers to families who had internet but did not have a computer. For families that don't have access to internet, um, Cynthia is going to talk a little bit about uh, the process that we have for supporting them. Um, I'm going to invite Cynthia actually to uh, chime in here because because it, another part of that access to resources at the school was uh, students who had specialized equipment. And so we created a pro protocol for for them also if they if there was some of that that they needed that they could come and get it. So Cynthia, I'll turn it over to you for a second. Thank you, Superintendent Hamilton. Uh, so we have students who have uh, laptops or iPads with very specific uh, software on them to support their unique learning needs. Uh, some of those students already had that equipment at home, but we had to, to determine what was remaining in the school. And through the same process that um, Paul spoke about, um, parents were uh, given an appointment, they have come to the school, they've picked up that equipment and it's now in the hands of the students and the parents at home to support their continuous learning. Uh, there were also, so, also some students who may be blind or visually impaired or deaf or hard of hearing that had very um, specific equipment to support them and we've also ensured that if they required that at home as well, uh, that it's now in their hands and they're able to use it. And that's it for now, Paul. Uh, 
Hi everyone, it's it's uh, Superintendent Callahan. I'm going to speak to our part one. It was a very important part that we engaged in and worked with our staff to connect with our families and our students again. They had been apart for a while and uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a nice process for uh, that nice gentle reconnection with our families and our students. So we came up with, we call it part one, we tried to be very, um, uh, very strategic and supportive in the way that we laid out our plan so that we were supporting our staff and then in turn supporting our students and families. So in part one, we laid it out for our staff, our principals and our educators in how they could connect. So there was a technological piece that we worked with them and we trained them of what that was going to look like. We used school messenger and something called teacher communicate and also emails. We had different ways that we were connecting with families to ensure that we could reach out and, and connect with them. We had some staff, they, uh, full staffs that did videos to reach out to their families. We had teachers that um, did videos to also reach out to their families. And we've heard a uh, great uh, response to how families appreciated this first point of contact. And as Paul had alluded to, we also built into part one, since we were speaking to our families, just to encourage them to go onto our board website and fill out the survey that we had about technology and access. This was our first opportunity to reach out to them and we felt that it was a good way to have it as a personal contact and say, please fill out the survey or we'll assist you in filling out the survey so that we could figure out who needed that kind of support. So again, this was a well, well received by our families and our students and they felt supported and just reconnected is what we heard and just happy again to have some of that normalcy and routine coming back into their lives. Thank you, Superintendent Callahan. I want you to know that during that awkward silence, I gave you a lovely introduction, <laughs> I, but I forgot to turn the uh, mute off on my mic. I appreciate it. It was great. <laughs> So our next step then was, uh, I mean, we, is for, for teachers to begin to uh, develop a, a level of comfort with the online learning platforms, um, particularly the uh, virtual learning space, otherwise known as uh, virtual learning environment, otherwise known as Brightspace or D2L, all the same names for the same uh, platform. Um, we, in, we ask that what well, we require that teachers use the uh, platforms that were supported by the board and are supported by the board. So teachers have either gone with the virtual learning environment or they've gone with the Microsoft um, Office suite, which has uh, a number of tools within it. Um, and so there were staff who were certainly very comfortable and were used to those platforms and had lots of experience with them, but there were many more staff for whom it was a new experience. So during that first week, we, we encouraged staff to um, get on and do some experimenting with the uh, tools, find out what they were capable of. We provided uh, a number of online um, training courses, and we really appreciate the work from ICT and, and our, our um, technology-enabled learning uh, educator Keith uh, Lefebvre and Keith provided uh, numerous workshops and so and each one was then taped so that staff who missed them could go back and watch them and uh, it was amazing how quickly uh, staff have adapted to the uh, the online learning and they worked really hard at it and it's, we so much appreciate uh, the efforts of teachers and uh, system staff who have really kind of moved this forward. Um, technology support and ongoing support was provided to staff through uh, heat and that's our method if you have a you know an issue with your computer that's how we generate the questions and get the support for it so that was ongoing and um, it's we had great reports I was talking to my principals at the beginning of last week we had a, uh, a teams meeting and um, the greater majority of the staff were online and were connecting with their students. And it was uh, really amazing to see how quickly people uh, adapted and started to use the technology. And I am going to turn it over. I still have my mic on to Wendy <laughs> and she's going to talk about uh, part three or step three in our process. Thank you, Superintendent Hamilton. We 
so when Superintendent Hamilton was talking about the technology side of it, so there was um, learning that had to happen there for some staff. They're all on a continuum. So there was that side of it. But then there was also, OK, how am I going to teach and what do lessons look like online and and how could we support that? So that was our next step. Once they were working with the technology and getting in there, it's what does this look like and how can we support right from K to 12? So one of the first things that we did as a system team was we looked at um, a, a week at a glance and so we looked at kindergarten primary junior intermediate and senior and what kinds of courses and what kinds of lessons and things could we put out for them so we did some templates we did some samples for people and what that might look like for them we put that all together and then we provided that so they could start at least with something uh, to just uh, to decide where they wanted to go with their students they were also doing they knew what they had done with their students previously since they know their kids so they were looking at that and then looking at some of the sample lessons that we had and then building that into their online learning so that was a piece that we put together another piece is the um, live training sessions that we've done and i'm just I am so amazed at what people have put together in such a short period of time. And I have to echo what Superintendent Hamilton was talking about. I can't believe how everybody has been mobilized and worked together as a team to move this forward for our students and families and, and truly I'm trying to understand the context of our families at home and how can we continue this learning. So from our educators in schools and our administrators in schools and our system staff, everybody working together. So we are putting together now these training sessions and we put them out to people opt in it's voluntary it depends on what you need at the time there's many of them that are happening so they can choose the ones that are supporting them and where they are in their own learning and what we do also is we collect a survey information at the end of each one to ensure that that's helping us figure out where should we go next what does the system need so that's an ongoing piece that we're doing weekly we put our weekly sessions together and then we put them out to the system another thing is you would have seen that the ministry had resources that they had put out and then uh, many, many publishers and different groups have had free resources that they've put out there. Uh, one thing was Math Up. I know we brought that to you in a former board meeting was the Math Up licenses that we had purchased. Math Up was uh, allowed us to do some free licenses from K to eight uh, for, until the end of June. So we were opting into that. And then we also vetted many, many, many resources and put those all together for our staff. So we put them by different grade groupings and then we put them by subject so it was easy for them to find. So we worked through that. Also, we're helping them with all of the safety pieces because of course when you're online there's an online etiquette but there's a safety piece that we also wanted to make sure that we were building into our lessons with our training but also then teachers building in with their students to ensure that they're being safe online and then talking about copyright because there's lots and lots of things out there and there are there are publishers that are uh, allowing us to do lots of different things that uh, through copyright to things like where you can read a book online to your kids i know there was a a story that um, Director Murray put out today about a teacher reading a chapter book, continue to read a chapter book to uh, her students and the students just thinking, this is just so wonderful. This is the real continent, continuity of learning where we're picking up from where we were before and continuing our uh, learning together. So against and student support training to assist teachers in planning. So I'm going to turn that over to uh, Superintendent Lemon and she can talk about that. In uh, many ways, I could probably say ditto. Um, the, the student support team uh, has uh, built a classroom shell for special education. And within that shell, uh, learning resource teachers, um, DL teachers, teachers with students with special education needs uh, can go in and find tasks and strategies and activities that will support students with special needs. Um, they are actually having a training session on Thursday at one o'clock uh, to become more immersed in that. Uh, we have a um, button on the website of resources for parents because we're trying to connect the parents as well so that they can support their students at home. In some cases with some of these um, children, it will be life skills learning and the parents are, are the ones that are likely there and will help um, 
facilitate that in the household. So we're we're trying to ensure that parents have support as well. And we've been working diligently to ensure that our educational assistants and child and youth workers have a role. Uh, the role that they would typically have in a school uh, is more around safety and supervision and medical and physical needs, and they're not in a position to support that currently. Uh, so we have worked with our union partner in this regard to look at what they can do uh, with and for students in this virtual environment. So there's been uh, lots of um, activities and tasks that, that are being provided and will continue to be provided. And I have to say, when people talk about the engagement, I posted a message today about an EA training session on Monday, and within probably two hours, we had well over 100 people already signed up. So they're very eager to learn and be of support. Thank you, Superintendent Lemon. Lemon. Change my slide here again. There we go. Um, so did I go one too far? Let me just back up here. Yes. So we did have um, a segment of our uh, population, uh, some of our families who did not have um, access to technology and did not have and would not be getting um, access to uh, internet. We haven't been able to sort out a solution for them at this point. And so we did develop a, a process and a protocol for uh, supporting those students um, with uh, paper copies. So once again, I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent uh, Lemon to talk about this. Thank you. So this one was a little bit trickier because we don't have permission to be in schools. Uh, we did develop a protocol and uh, uh, send it to the medical officer of health to have three staff working out of the Blue Water Education Centre three days a week to print, prepare and distribute by perlator hard copy um, learning materials for students that had absolutely no other access to the learning. Uh, so uh, teachers through their principal are to have all of those materials collated and in an email to a uh, generic email that is being monitored by these three employees. Uh, it's there to be there by four o'clock on Tuesday. Uh, those staff will work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to get them printed and out. Uh, and then we'll just rotate again into the next week. And I think it was at three o'clock this afternoon, there were 109 emails that had come in with requests for hard copy materials to go. Some of those emails had multiple attachments to them for different students. So we're very excited to be able to provide this support. Thank you, Superintendent Lemon. One of the um, things we mentioned earlier, um, Director Murray mentioned, is that we, we have had um, a survey that we've put out to staff and um, we've been collecting a little bit of data. And so uh, Superintendent Callahan's just going to talk a wee bit about that. Thank you. Yes, as um, Director Murray was, was speaking to, we've got this, uh, it's a survey that we put out there. Um, it's a really interesting analytical online tool. And what happens is we invite people to share their thoughts with us. So we asked a specific question and then the question's on the screen. Now that we have started distance learning, what are your thoughts? What's working well and what can we improve? And we, we're collecting this so that we can gain the feedback so it can inform the next steps in our plan. So we put that out there and what happens is people put their get, put their thoughts out there and then you get to rate thoughts one out uh, one to five. So we've had 2093 thoughts from and this is collective from staff and from students and from parents. And we've also had over 40,000 ratings. So what happens at the end of this, we get a report that comes to us and that'll be on Friday. And then we'll be going through that. We're looking to see what those, those thoughts and things that are out there that are helping inform our next steps. And then we'll share them with different stakeholders. And I'd like to thank um, the student senators and student trustees for getting the word out for us. We really appreciate it. And also our uh, administrators helped us do that. And then we sent it out to our staff directly, but it's just a great way for us to gain some insight on how it's going and then um, then we'll revise our plan going forward. Thank you, Superintendent Callahan. Uh, and I just want to kind of end off our report by saying um, how much we 
would like to express our appreciation and thanks to staff and all all parts of the organization who have really been working tirelessly and thinking outside of the box in order to create opportunities for students in Blue Water District School Board. Um, the thinking for this started back in March break. I mean, we could see where uh, things could be going, so we wanted to be prepared. And so I know there were uh, quite a few staff who worked through the March break just to try to make sure that things were ready to go. And so we really appreciate that. And, um, and uh, we uh, sincerely hope that um, our families, and we had good feedback, are enjoying the, lear enjoying the learning opportunities that are being provided. Thank you, Chair Johnston. Okay, and, and thank you, uh, Superintendent Hamilton. So now I'm going to, um, looking at the chat um, to the side and for comments or questions. So uh, Trustee Dawson. I have to say I'm really impressed with this report. It sounds like you have all the bases covered. I can't think of anything that you've missed and um, hats off and kudos to all the staff that have worked so hard to produce this report and to put this whole plan together. So thank you. Okay, and Director Murray. Thank you, Chair Johnstone. I'd just like to put some context on March the 13th, the Friday before March break, we got the note, the notice from the ministry that the ministerial order was being put in place. And then we all went on March break. We returned from March break on the 23rd of March. And all of this work has been completed in the last four weeks. It, it is just truly phenomenal. And I'd just like to acknowledge the leadership of the superintendents for coordinating all of this and the, the staff that have come forward. And it, it's just, it's been absolutely phenomenal um, and we've we've operated on the premise of two things one that our we are going to be sensitive to the uh, well-being of our staff and students throughout this process we are going to empower our staff to pace themselves at a pace that makes sense for them in terms of their own learning and the needs of their students and we are going to provide as much support as we we possibly can to our parents and community and i am just like blown away when you see it put all together there. Um, I'm just absolutely so proud of all the work that everybody has done. So thank you for all of that. And thank you. And uh, next question is Trustee Thompson. I wanted to say bravo first. Um, I think it is amazing the work that's been done and uh, I'm most impressed in the presentation. As much as we're not together, it felt very seamless uh, to hear that presentation today, so thank you. I, I feel like we've been talking about uh, online distance learning um, in theory for a long time, and all of a sudden we've been thrust into doing it in practice. And I know that we're learning a lot as we go through that, and I guess I'm looking to our senior team to tell us as trustees if there's where the gaps are, what we need to be doing as we move forward in our planning, in our budgeting in the next little while, um, what we need to be looking at so that our students and our staff have the tools that they need to be able to do this kind of work. I'll begin and then I'll invite uh, my colleagues to join in. I mean, certainly we still have um, pockets within our community where uh, we have limited access um, and we're going to continue to have that until we get a, you know, a, I think a stronger uh, provincial network. We're very fortunate as a board that you know, our broadband um, took some, you know, we've made some great advances over the last couple of years within our schools and some of our communities to, um, so that greatly increased the potential. Um, so I think that's one uh, key piece. Um, and continuing to provide training. I mean, for for many staff, um, this is this is new, and um, so they're taking baby steps. Um, there are a lot more sort of um, capabilities within the software that's provided that can enrich the learning experiences. And there are ways of teaching online that really make learning uh, much more enjoyable and, and uh, interesting. And so I think that's probably another area of growth. I'll stop there and just turn it over to my colleagues. They may have some additional ideas. Yeah, 
if I could comment uh, through the chair, um, I think does, we have done a phenomenal job of providing learning opportunities for our students, but I think we have to also recognize and acknowledge that this is not um, the, the regular classroom world in which kids learn. And we continue to hear stories of parents who are working from home, um, trying to support their kids and their learning experience, uh, but continue to do their job. And there are some things um, that I don't think that we will be able to absolutely bridge in the learning opportunities for our students un until we actually return to school. Uh, so I think the virtual learning environment is providing lots of opportunities. It's, it's not yet a perfect world and uh, it, it does not necessarily uh, allow parents and teachers to provide the same quality of education in, in the classroom, nor should it, because it's a very different circumstance and environment uh, which we're in. I think um, the big learning is that as an organization, we've been able to pivot and respond to the requests from the Ministry of Education um, in a very productive way. Um, I think that speaks to the, um, the infrastructure and the collaboration that we have within our organization. I, I would say that the pedagogy um, is a work in progress and that the amount of additional um, pressure on parents is still too high uh, and that um, we would have a lot more work to do around the implementation of a quality instructional experience that we have articulated as a priority in Blue Water District School Board. And so it's been a, a very steep learning curve for our staff. Um, we, we've invested a lot of time in, um, in training our staff. The ministry has provided us the flexibility and some additional resources to invest in staff training, but we have a long way to go in terms of creating um, you know, um, instructional um, uh, activities and strategies that would mirror those experiences that they get in the classroom. And so for me, it reinforces the value of the blended learning model that mm -hmm. we've been trying to implement for a number of years here in Blue Water. And I'm hoping that after all of this experience and we are back in schools, that staff will see the value of incorporating some of this new learning into the instruction within the classroom. I think that's really where the power will be. Um, but I really hope we are not ever going to get to a place where the um, the class students sitting in a classroom with the teacher and engaging with the teacher um, is lost in this process. And I know that the kids have uh, valued the reconnection with their teachers. That reconnection, that relationship reconnection um, has been probably one of the most important things. Staff have produced uh, videos and um, and other kinds of um, um, activities to reconnect to their kids and just the smiles and the happiness and the feedback that we've received um, from families and kids has, has been great. But I would say that's that's really the, the gap right now is in the pedagogy or the instruction. Okay. Um, so I, I'm looking at the chat. So Trustee Thompson, is your follow-up question um, fit with this or... Or do you want me to move on? It says Jane Thompson follow up. I would just like to make a comment. Um, I appreciate what you're saying. I respect what you're saying. I hope we're doing a really excellent job of um, tracking the information that we're we're gaining as we go through this um, unexpected experiment. Um, so that when the time comes to move forward, we know what works and what doesn't work and why. Um, and I thank you again for the work that you're doing. Okay, and Trustee Lutz, you have a question? Yes, first, 
A couple comments that just a huge thank you to all the staff at all levels for the incredible work into the presentation, all the work that's gone into distance learning. It is really appreciated by myself, both as a trustee and as a parent, and I hear from other parents how much it is appreciated. And one other comment, and then my question, I, I also just wanna say how incredibly wonderful it is as a board that we are only using the two platforms and their board supported technology. I am hearing nightmares from parents in other school boards with some of the other commonly used tools. So I'm very grateful that that decision was made and I see it rolling out a lot smoother than some of the other tools. So that now, sorry for all that, but now my question is just, have our staff managed to connect with all of our students and if there are some that haven't been connected with is there a plan to so somehow make connections there thank you can i uh, i'll give that a, a a bit of a stab um i know i was talking with the principal today in the community um that's um you know particularly needy and that principal was telling me that they had connected with 99 percent of their students um, they've been, you know, whether it's through telephone or, you know, some they've been just really um, creative, you know, calling other um, contact members that, you know, that have been um, shared with us and, and just working really hard to get through to all of our students. So I would say we've been uh, highly successful. Um, not all students are choosing to engage. There are some that um, are not, but I know, um, again, in this particular school, uh, they figured that would be less than 10% of the students would that would uh, not be engaging. That's phenomenal. And if I can follow up to that, um, principals have been advised that if there are students that they could not reconnect with, that they can contact um, some of our staff in student support and that they will see if they can make that connection. So that we have somebody who is continually trying to uh, to track them down. Yeah, I know some of our in-school special needs teams uh, have been working uh, with teachers, uh, you know, as, as uh, Cynthia had mentioned, uh, to try to reach out because maybe one of those teachers had a particular connection with a student. Okay, um, and I noticed that Trustee McComb had a comment. Um, did you want to say your comment there, Trustee McComb? I just said I good, just good job good there, job. everybody. <laughs> I want to try to tell you, Trustee McComb, when you come online, we get a lot of trailing. <laughs> okay, and I see that Trustee Dawson has a question, and thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair Johnstone. Uh, I noticed on Facebook that some students that are in the Specialist High Skills Program are able to continue working on projects. I'm just wondering how prevalent that is across the system. Uh, once again, our teachers have been incredible resource, incredibly resourceful in finding um, uh, online resources that uh, relate to the various courses. So, so you know, students in the in um, a foods course are able to take the smart course, the smart serve, or mm -hmm. you know, if uh, there's one, the boating one, or there's all different ones that are related to their various uh, areas of technology. So. They've been uh, very creative in, in trying to make uh, those connections and make the meaning, the learning meaningful for students. I think as a, uh, our director has alluded to, it does not replace the classroom and it, it's not going to be equal to that wonderful experience they get, that practical hands-on that experience that they get in the classroom. But teachers are working very hard to find relevant learning um, opportunities for students. And I think um, the um, ministry has indicated that, you know, it will, this, uh, will not impede students from being able to get the uh, the red seal qualifications that uh, they need to be able to move on to the next level. Okay, um, I'm just gonna I'm looking at the chat to see if there's any further questions, and I don't see any. I'm going to put the motion back on the floor, but I, I want to thank uh, Superintendent Hamilton and of course the 
the the other superintendents that chimed in and of course director murray and i also think there was some really great questions here and i think one of the things moving forward in particular as we begin budget deliberations is that's where exactly if we have concerns about different gaps is that you know thinking about if there's um you know budgetary um, ways that we can help uh, to uh, fill those gaps that are of course a benefit to our students our families and our in instructional and of course our our other um, education workers throughout the system so thank you very very much and um, I'm going to put the motion back on so that the Blue Water District School Board received the continuity of learning plan report for information. It was moved by Trustee Dawson and seconded by Trustee Atkinson. All in favor? And is there anybody opposed? Okay, I see none and that is approved and carried. And thank you and thank you uh, once again, um, Superintendent Hamilton. So now we're going to move on to C2B and that is has to do with the uh, Blue Water Education Foundation. I'm going to, of course, invite Director Murray to present the report. And first off, I'm going to put the motion on the floor so that the Blue Water District School Board received the Blue Water Education Foundation report for information. Can I have, I see that I have Trustee Thompson that's moved and I just need somebody to second it. And Trustee McComb, excellent. Okay, welcome Director Murray. Thank you, Chair Johnstone. I re this report is really to bring you up to speed on some conversations that have been going on with uh, the board directors of the Blue Water Education Foundation for almost two years now. We, we meet approximately three times a year and the we um, from Blue Water is the area superintendent responsible for the programming at the Outdoor Education Centre and at this time that's uh, uh, Superintendent Lemon, um, Superintendent Cummings and myself and from the foundation usually it's the chair of their board of directors Ron Motram and a couple of their other um, directors and we meet to review the programming at the center and also to look at the partnership and agreement that we have between the Blue Water District School Board and the Blue Water Education Foundation. And I just want to remind trustees that the Outdoor Education Center, the Blue Water Outdoor Education Center is not owned by Blue Water District School Board. It is in trust in the Blue, uh, with the Blue Water Education Foundation. It was placed in trust a number of years ago to ensure that um, we would be able to, in perpetuity, um, have access to that facility um, and site because we were starting to see um, uh, that the funding structure for outdoor education, uh, uh, education was changing and we didn't want to be in a position um, that it would be seen as a property of the board and would not be able to be sustained into the future. So um, we've been discussing with the foundation two key things, program sustainability over time and facility sustainability. Um, we've subsequently in the last decade also seen a reduction in the amount of funding that comes to school boards for outdoor education. Um, we do not require an outdoor education center to deliver out, um, those expectations within the, within the curriculum, but we are very, very fortunate in Blue Water to have access to uh, many different um, outdoor facilities, including the outdoor education center. We have the Beaver Valley, we have the Great Highlands Hills, we have, I mean, we're just very, very fortunate. Um, to have access to the to the environment that we do in national parks, provincial parks, etc. So the conversation has really been how do we ensure that that facility is maximized in its usage, and we basically are the their number one client. And how can we 
ensure that we are maximizing our resources to provide um, outdoor education experiences to as many students in blue water as possible. Currently, we focus on the grade sixes. They all have a shared experience at the outdoor education center. That experience has also been modified over the last several years. Um, but the goal is to sustain the access to the site and the maintenance of the site and to ensure that we have uh, programming available to our students. So that's been the conversation and the document that you have access to is a very rough draft of some specific work that um, we're uh, partnering on right now and that is to more clearly articulate, the, have the board of directors more clearly articulate what um, their mandate is, what they value, what their vision for the for the site is, all of those kinds of things that we went through in developing a board strategic plan. So um, I, I, uh, I I provided them with a framework for them to consider. They met and they and they um, put so their ideas to paper. And what you have is the rough draft of that. I have subsequently taken that information and reformatted it into a, a strategic blueprint. Um, looking at the next five years, and um, and we had an, a further conversation last evening. I was invited to uh, a board of directors meeting via Skype last evening, and they talked through um, and made so, uh, some changes and modifications to to that thinking that you have in front of you. I mean, I was really really pleased with the the work they had done, and we are definitely getting closer to having. Um, something really clearly articulated and put to paper so that we can continue to partner and look at the the alignment between the, their strategic vision or strategic blueprint and our strategic plan. Um, they have gone out and actually uh, sought some further advice from other jurisdictions that provide that have self-sustaining, self-funded outdoor education sites. And um, last summer, they hired a, a coordinator who helped them put together some summer camps. And they ran those um, summer camps last summer. They were very successful. Um, in fact, they, it, it went beyond their expectations. And it's quite unfortunate the set of circumstances right now is, is putting a little bit of um, um, delay into their plan, but they are continuing to plan further camps and further usages for the site. And and that's really um, what the report is about, is to give you a heads up that that is going on right now. What we had originally planned was that uh, the um, representatives from the board of directors would come to a meeting in May and we would have a dialogue with the trustees. We're going to take a step back from that and think that through a little bit now, given the, the way that we're looking at board meetings, um, but we will get there um, when it's appropriate to do so. And so that we can have that, um, that larger conversation about the, the commitment of all the parties to continue to, to go forward. The reality is if um, we need to seize on the moment, and the moment right now is our students across this province, across this country, are extremely invested in the environment and standing up for um, um, environmental sustainability. And, and also they are, they are very socially minded. We also um, need to capitalize on the beauty of Bruce and Gray and um, making more people aware um, that this site actually exists. And so we are really well positioned to, um, to bring that sustainability. And because quite frankly, if we don't think this way, then my concern is the, the way that uh, funding is going, the way that um, um, you know, other decisions are being made in the province that you know, potentially could die a death by a thousand cuts. So we, um, we are committed. We want to um, continue, and um, this is the beginning of that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And so, um, have any questions or comments for Director Murray concerning the report?
So, Trustee Boyd John. That's it. I love the Outdoor Education Center. I think it's great. Thank you. And Trustee Thompson. I think you've answered what I was going to ask, but I know that the Outdoor Education Center has been highly valued by the Board of Trustees since my, certainly since my time on the board and before. Um, I think there is great value in inviting um, their board to come and meet with us. I think the personal contact uh, and uh, each of us understanding um, each other's perspective is very valuable and I I look forward to meeting with them in person. Great, and Trustee Lutz. Like many others, I have fantastic memories of going to the Outdoor Ed Center as a student and I know many students currently who that is a highlight of their schooling experience and I have a daughter very excited to go to the camp there this summer assuming you know things run we'll see what happens and um, I just want to say that in any way we can support the incredible educational opportunities we have there I look forward to working towards that in the future thank you thank you and I just wanted to say that um, when I attend um, say Board of Directors for OPSPO or of course our OPSPO regional meeting the Western for the Western region region. They often talk about that they would like to come back up and they thought it was one of the best places to have a regional meeting. So when we talk about often where you know students say this is the, you know one of their highlights in their elementary education of attending the outdoor education center. I can tell you it's also been <laughs> an experience that is memorial for uh, many trustees across the western region so thank you and thank you very much and i uh, i see uh, trustee thompson you have a follow-up i do sorry i just am aware um that used to have a trustee on the meetings that went with the um outdoor education center board of trustees or board of uh their board and we no longer do that and I appreciate there's probably some reasons that that happened in the past um, but I wonder if we could consider uh, in today's I when I attend their fundraiser in the in the fall I'm always concerned we've lost a little connection um, to our the board of the uh, outdoor education center and I think any opportunity that we have to build that relationship back up is a positive one so just uh, something to consider thank you I'm actually not really aware that I've never had a trustee involved since since I've been involved um, I will look into that for sure absolutely okay thank you okay so I see no further Questions, comments, or follow up. So, the motion is that the Blue Water District School Board receive the. Um, no, that's not it. That the Blue Water, yes, Blue Water District School Board received the Blue Water Education Foundation report for information. It was moved by Trustee Thompson and seconded by Trustee McComb. All in favor? Yeah. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, I see none and it's approved. So now we're on to the D part of our board, virtual board meeting. It's uh, communications. I have not received any correspondence um, to, to share with everybody, um, but under D2, um, under communications and announcements, so um, so I'm just going to start with if there is any communications or announcements from student trustees. Okay, okay, so uh, 
Student Trustee Shigano has uh, said there is none. I'm not seeing anything there. Um, how about, um, so there's trustee staff in Ministry of Education and OPSPA. And I see that Trustee Thompson has a question. Yes, I'm, we heard, I believe it was last week, uh, our Minister of Education announced that there would be iPads uh, given to school boards uh, to support students that didn't have technology. And I just wondered if we knew how many iPads we would be receiving in our board. I can respond through the chair if you'd like. Yes. We have absolutely no information on this other than um, we heard, I heard the announcement on the television as well. Um, my understanding is we should be receiving something, but we have not received anything to date and we've not received any information related to how those would be distributed um, to school boards. Um, it's 21,000. Um, iPads and across 72 school boards, it, it would be a very small number, but we have not received any information. And have I have a question. So have you put forward anything asking about that to the ministry about, you know, kind of, you know, prodding them to find out about when where these iPads are and when they're coming and how they're being loaded and getting into students' hands? Uh, yes, uh, Chair Johnstone, we, um, the directors, um, have have asked a lot of questions about this, and um, the Executive Officer of Code has put forth our questions to the Deputy Minister, Nancy Naylor, and we've not, we haven't received any information at this point. There may be an update for us on Thursday when we have our weekly call, but we haven't seen anything yet. Okay. So you will, of course, keep us abreast on that because we're almost into May. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just looking. So we're at D3 and that is conferences, conventions and out of districts meetings. Um, so if any trustees have any of these that they're not attending to bring them forward. <laughs> I just want to let you know that um, last week that we basically had a meeting of the, you know, like to do with board of directors and the board of directors meeting has been canceled for the month of May. Uh, we were supposed to meet, but of course that's been put off and also the annual general meeting for OPSPA has also been, um, you could say postponed and put off to the fall. And so it, it's looking like our May meeting <laughs> is going to be in September and the AGM is going to uh, be there then. And who knows exactly how, what kind of platform that it's actually going to be on. So it might be all virtual for all, all we know. Okay. I, uh, does anybody else have any other an um, announcements to do with any conventions and out of district meetings? Comment, Trustee Dawson. Trustee Dawson. Might have to unmute. Sorry, I'd just like to thank uh, Trustee Johnson, Chair Johnstone and uh, Director Murray for the uh, session you had on open line. I think you put a lot of parents' minds at ease. It was a great session and uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you. And Trustee Thompson, did you have something to share too? I was just wondering if Director Murray could comment on the um, Bruce Peninsula District School and the potential use of that for medical purposes. Certainly through the chair. Um, so we were approached um, probably three weeks ago um, to uh, consider utilizing the school by the um, 
staff at the Lion's Head Hospital as an extension or what they're referring to as an alternative care facility. It's not to be deemed uh, an extension of a hospital in case there is there are um, additional cases of COVID that they are not able to accommodate at the hospital and I believe they only have four beds at the hospital. Um, this was um, a, a small group, a community group, um, and uh, a local the local chief of staff from the hospital was part of that group. Um, we work through the technical issues because because basically our schools are closed and they're um, they're not being used for this purpose. Um, there are uh, alternate care um, facilities in Kincardine, Owen Sound, and Hanover. Um, and they are utilizing um, the community centers in, the, in that regard. So it was, it was quite a unique situation. Um, we, were, we talked it through um, the medical officer of health, uh, Grey Bruce uh, medical officer of health was involved in the conversations and a decision was made to access the gymnasium at the school uh, for this purpose. And um, uh, the um, uh, currently over the last week or week and a half, they've been bringing in cots and, and setting up that facility. They, the goal is to never have to use it, of course. And, um, and I have been communicating with the Ministry of Education about this as well. And the, um, the Ministry of Education is very is supportive of um, supporting the health sector right now. Um, and so we are working through that, that uh, partnership. And uh, I, I suspect they'll be, um, over the next um, few days, they'll have had it set up. It will then be locked up again and be utilized should it be required. Excellent. Any further comments uh, concerning uh, what Director Murray just um, brought in terms of conversation here, communication? Okay, uh, Trustee Thompson, did you have something additional there? No, uh, thank you very much. I, I just hope we are, um, it hasn't gone out as a media release to my knowledge yet. Um, I'm concerned when it does that parents would think school's not yet cancelled till the end of the school year and I've left things in my student's locker or their their classroom and how would I access that so I, it's all premature at this point but I just food for thought that we consider how we message that or deal with that as we move forward. Okay. Thank you through the chair. I can add to that. Um, uh, the principal has been very um, instrumental in helping to support this process. So all of the equipment that was going to be distributed was removed. The principal set up a uh, home base at uh, uh, St. Edmund School and um, he also investigated um, access to um, some of those supplies. The government has not, uh, the command table has not provided any permission yet for students to access their belongings. Um, should that be required? In my conversation with Dr. R, the medical officer of health, um, he's prepared to assist us uh, with that. Um, so I don't have any concerns in that regard. Um, and um, again, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're down to D4, our calendar of events, which is becoming much shorter. And also um, maybe things keep on getting canceled or postponed. Is there anything um, particularly here, Director Murray, you would like to draw the attention to um, to trustees and staff? Uh, yes, please. Thanks, Chair Johnstone. Um, we in all likelihood will want to have a business committee of the whole on May the 5th. Um, we have um, been told that the um, grants for student needs are not likely to come in until that first week of May. So we may not have a lot um, of information at that point um, from the government, but um, Superintendent Cummings and his and his team are 
uh, working through also with uh, Superintendent Wilder for the staffing purposes. So we will have some updates that we need to bring to the trustees as we continue the budget process. And so I would focus on that one. And then um, uh, the, the next board meeting then would be on the 19th of May. Thank you. And also, um, I, I, I know that we're coming up to a professional activity day and that Blue Water, are, we're planning to hold that professional activity a day? Um, yes, Chair. Um, we are moving forward. It's quite a mixed response across the province and there is definitely a provincial discussion about the remainder of the PA days this year given the circumstances. But yes, we are. Um, again, um, the superintendents with their staff have put together quite a selection of um, opportunities for staff. We are taking a very open-ended self-directed approach to this and in that uh, staff can pick and choose what they require and utilize their time in a way that's relevant and um, for them um, on that day and then going forward beyond the uh, April day we'll have to see what the provincial response is going to be but at this point we see it as a as a continued support for professional learning for our staff. Excellent excellent thank you and thank you very much so we're at E adjournment so I am going to put that motion on the floor that the Blue Water District School Board adjourn Jen, at. Can I make oh. a comment? Oh, okay. So I just, I missed that. I was trying to watch. Go ahead. Uh, it's not, uh, I just wanted to say from my perspective, this meeting flowed very smoothly. Uh, it's different to not be together with each other, but I don't <laughs> feel like I missed any anything. The presentations were excellent. And I just wanted to compliment you and everyone on the the meeting. Um, I certainly appreciate the commute, but it, uh, <laughs> it flowed very nicely. So thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, so we're going to move to adjournment um, that the Blue Water District School Board adjourn at 833. Can I have a mover and a seconder? So Trustee McComb. I need one more. It's just one more. Ah, Trusty Boy Johns, all in favor? Uh, opposed, if any? I see none. So I'm going to adjourn this meeting. I want to um, say to you all, thank you very much. Of course, have a safe trip home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, there was just one more thing that I kind of wanted to do, and I will be right with you. I want to let you know the whole time I've been surfing in the background. <laughs> And have a great evening. Stay safe. Don't forget to wash your hands. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.